Good morning to everyone, and we're so glad that you all are here. Uh, this is, of course, the Linwood Shopping Center Redevelopment Sun Fresh Grocery. Uh, groundbreaking to begin the de demolition and also uh, start um, the beginning of a new day. I'm City Councilman Jermaine Reed, representing the 3rd District, and we want to start off with prayer. And so I'm going to invite uh, Reverend Wallace Hartsville to the podium here who of course is the pastor emeritus of Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church. And as he comes, I'll tell you real briefly that of course he, along with uh, the late Reverend L. Earl Abel of uh, Palestine Missionary Baptist Church, of course John Modest Miles of Morningstar uh, Missionary Baptist Church were the original stakeholders for this uh, former Linwood Shopping Center site. Uh, and he certainly is a living, as he walks up, 87? <laughs> 87 years old, living legend right here in our community. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We do give you thanks for this blessed day that you have sent our way. And oh Lord, we come in a historic moment of our lives. We are praying that as we come, you will give us grateful hearts that we again may move this community into a new day. And that the breaking of ground in this day may be a breaking of the economic barriers that block so many of us in this community. We pray our Father that as we come you will give joy in our heart and that this store will be honest, will be fair, will do things right and pe treat people like people. We pray, O oh God, that as we come today, that you will be with us, guide and direct our hearts and thoughts. And may this community stand up, be proud, and that the economic barriers be destroyed and that others will come and bless our hearts. In the name of our Father, we ask these blessings. In the name of the Son, we praise Thee for these blessings. In the name of the Holy Spirit, we give You thanks this day. And for the people, for the people, for the people that has made this possible. In the precious name of our Lord, we ask it, and for his sake, amen. Yeah. Could, I just, could, I just say, could I just say, many of you don't know and you, and you don't really, really, really know, but I want you to know, a young man, stand up there, son, you, yeah, you. <laughs> This young man has worked hard, hard, hard to make these things possible. And I just want you to give him a big amen. We of course will hear more about that young man, Don Maxwell, along the way today. Uh, and we have a long way to go, a lot of speakers, and uh, we want to make sure we're able to get to all of it. Uh, but before we do that, of course, let's give it up again one more time for Reverend Wallace Hartsville for her. I see several of my colleagues here who you'll hear from Mayor James here very shortly, who is really responsible for this as well. Uh, Councilwoman Catherine Shields, who's here. Um, 
Council Member Scott Taylor, who's also joining us here as well. And I'm not seeing uh, other council members. Quentin Lucas will join us very shortly here. Uh, Mr. Barnes, excuse me, didn't see you there. Uh, the chairman of Black Falcons, Lee Barnes. <laughs> and there's Melba Curls here. Okay, I don't see Melba Curls, but let's give it up for Melba Curls too. Our past council person. I've got a few remarks that I want to make and then I'll uh, allow Mayor James to come up uh, uh, to make a few comments as well. But this morning, while I was uh, in my daily devotion, as I do every morning, uh, was preparing for the day and preparing for uh, early morning, which I was out here at 5 a.m. Uh, but this morning, there was a song that popped in my head, and it was a song that many of you may know. Uh, it was written back in 1975 uh, by a gentleman named Teddy Pentegrass. And that song I used to hear in the house when I was growing up, and it, it said, wake up. Yeah. Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> but it said, wake up, everybody. Yeah. Now, now I, I won't sing it, but I, I can feel it. Because that's, that's how I felt it this morning. But I, I'll say a few words, because I looked up the lyrics, because I, wanted, I, it, I think it really reflects what today is all about. But it says, wake up, everybody. No more sleeping in bed. No more... Uh, backwards thinking time of think for thinking ahead. The world has changed so much from what it used to be. There is so much hatred, war, and poverty. Wake up to all the teachers. Time to teach a new way. Maybe they'll listen to what you've got to say. Then when you listen, then when they listen uh, to what you've got to say, because there's the ones who are coming up in the world. Uh, is in their hands and when you teach the children teach them the very best that you can the world won't get no better that's kind of how it goes uh, if you just let it be the world won't get no better if uh, the world won't get no better we've got to change it yeah just me and you you and me <laughs> and my word. Wake up to all the doctors. Wake up. You know, it goes on and on. It, it's a good song. But I think it really, really reflects and is so profound to what today is all about. Of course, those words back in 1975 uh, and today, 2017, they're so profound to our world that's so changing every single day. Uh, and we've got to be laser focused on helping improve our world in our very community, which is what I believe we're doing here today. A brief history that I want to give about this site because it was the former uh, old St. Joseph Hospital, which opened its doors here at Linwood Boulevard in Prospect back in 1917. Now, after 60 years of being here, uh, it was abandoned in 1977, and the hospital, of course, moved out to uh, Interstate 435 and, of course, State Line uh, Road. There, of course, were several, several people who were interested in this property. And as I mentioned earlier, when Pastor uh, Hartsfield got up to give his speech, uh, you know, they were able to open up this very grocery store and shopping center, which you see here today, back in 1982. And unfortunately, those doors closed back in 2007. And so 10 years later, we're here to begin the construction of a new $13 million grocery store. St. Joseph Hospital certainly was a large um, uh, employer right here in our community. And I know that uh, La the Lapari brothers are going to be employing a lot of folks in our community. And uh, our community certainly deserves a full service grocery store. And we've got to do everything that we can to make sure that these amenities are afforded to all of our citizens. The Prospect Corridor has certainly been one of my main priorities since I've been elected to the City Council uh, in 2011. From both directions on the north and also, of course, on the south, uh, it's become and it is a transportation hub with nearly uh, 125,000 people per day traveling along the Prospect uh, bus. And we've continued to work extremely hard to address the food desert issue, addressing uh, the opportunities for new retail and improved businesses, and building on the momentum that the mayor and the city council certainly has started with the Aldi's grocery store on uh, 39th and Prospect. I'll never forget going out there and said, oh, that'd be done in six months, but it took a little longer. 
And then, of course, the Mayor James sent me out there to go and uh, do the Inwood, uh, the East Patrol Station the, uh, for Leon Jordan Mercer Campus, which, of course, was $74 million in the Morningstar Family Life Center of $3.6 million. So our support has continued to be vital to the community. But I think what is most important are the residents who live in these surrounding neighborhoods. From the Key Coalition neighborhood, Santa Fe, Wendell Phillips, Oak Park, Ivanhoe, and Washington Weekly. This, is, this will and continue to be a catalyst for our community as we move forward. I won't forget how I came here as a kid and used to try to take people's groceries to you know, make a couple of dollars uh, <laughs> when I was a kid. And so it makes me very proud to stand here today to be able to make this happen for our community, of course, along with my colleagues who worked extremely hard to make it happen. So with that, just like the song, as I mentioned, during my morning devotion, and Mayor James, please come on up here so you could go next. Um, but <laughs> let, me, let me say something about Mayor James, because just like I was saying in the song about wake up everybody and teaching and all that, uh, the song uh, from Teddy Pendergrass, we have woke up Kansas City because of this man. We woke up to our community because his leadership in energizing and restoring our community, one child, one family, one neighborhood at a time, he's continued to be a voice on this project and we have to give him a debt of gratitude and praise. So Mayor James, thank you. I don't generally wear this, but my head is cold and I don't have the hair that he does and I'm too old to be standing out here faking it. <laughs> you know what? Um, this is really a great day. Um, we announced this, first announced this, I think standing here in May of 15. Yeah, that's right. That led, that was the culmination of about a year and a half or two years of conversations, deal making, financing, all sorts of stuff. Jermaine Reed was in a lot of that. He worked his tail off. He's been a good representative of this community. He's been a good representative of the third district doing what he's doing, uh, both on this and on the Aldi store and other things as well. The one thing that I will say is, is that during the time that we were putting this all together, we worked as a team. The entire council was engaged. Jermaine was one of the leaders in that council, along with Melba Curls, his co-friend from the 3rd District, and it was a team effort. So I want to thank Jermaine for everything he's done, and I also want to thank the members of the council who in, May of 20, uh, who in 2015 voted unanimously to approve the sale of this, to approve the purchase of this shopping center for $995,000 by the city uh, with Don Maxwell. So thanks to everybody who was involved in that. This, uh, this area is a big symbol. Uh, it was one of those things that we kind of targeted early on to say that if we want to really make a foothold and show that we're doing some pro making progress on the east side, this is one of those early visible symbols that must absolutely change. This is something that has been dormant for quite some time and now it's about to change. It's going to bring fresh food to the neighborhood. It's going to bring, it's going to bring economic activity to the neighborhood. It's going to bring some jobs to the neighborhood. But one of the things that it's going to bring, it's going to bring pride to this neighborhood because you will have a grocery store that is second to none in, in, in this city. We're not talking about some slipshod deal here. This is meant to be a first class operation all the way. And I want to thank the Lapari brothers for stepping up and doing that. And they, they made those assurances that this isn't going to be some place that, uh, that is not worthy of the people who are here. I want to thank uh, Troy Schulte because Troy worked his tail off. This was an unusual deal. When you don't have developers who are willing to step up, but you have great and strong community interest, that's when the city tries to step in because that's one of those rare occasions when the city does become a developer. And this is one of those places where we chose to be a developer because we knew that this had to get done. It's a long process. 
It doesn't move as fast as the other folks sometimes because we have a lot more hoops to jump through. But we jumped through them, we landed on our feet, and here we are today. It took a little longer than we wanted it to, but at the end of the day, it's not how fast you move, it's how well you move, but we've moved well here. I want to thank Don Maxwell for what you've done, Don, in terms of working with this as well. Thank you very much. The EDC has been very good in working on this. They helped us out quite a bit because at the end of the day, like I said, the city is not a developer, but the EDC knows how to get things done, and they work with Troy and the city and the council to make sure that this got done. In short, one thing I want you to remember is this. This isn't an end. This is verily a beginning. There are other things going on as well, but this is going to be a very visible symbol of commitment. It's going to be a very visible symbol of people getting what they finally deserved, a quality, a quality shopping experience, access to the types of food that you've wanted, and along a transportation mark so that it will be easier to get here. Thank you all for being here and braving this weather. Uh, Troy is responsible for the weather. Uh, <laughs> I'm only responsible at 65 degrees and up. <laughs> Anything below that's his problem, all right? But thank you all for being here, and thank you for your commitment. And the last thing I'll say is it's not enough to stand here for the groundbreaking. When the store opens, you've got to come buy some food here, all right? Thank you all. I'm going to make a challenge right now for uh, the first person who comes to the grocery store. I'm going to spend $100 for the first shopper. And Mayor James is going to match that, right? I, I, am. I just want to tell you that when he spends his $100, I'm going to convince him to spend another 100 <laughs> uh, We'll let Frank White pay for that. Uh, <laughs> Troy, I believe your name was mentioned, uh, but we'll have you come up out to Frank White since I said Frank's name first. Uh, Frank, of course, needs no introduction. Our county executive and all-star uh, baseball legend. There you go. Good, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to introduce uh, Miss Diane Cleaver, who came in a little bit later, just wanted to make sure everyone knew she was here. Well, thank you so much for all you do. And, and I'm really not here today uh, as your county executive. I'm here as someone who grew up in the neighborhood. And for those of you who know me, knew I grew up just right down the street at 29th and Olive. And I still have three sets of family that still live on the block. And and just to borrow a phrase from an old show, uh, an old song, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, he says, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And I really, and I really believe that today. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I think that uh, when, you live, when, you, when you're lucky enough to be on the earth for quite some time, you kind of see things come, you kind of see things go. And then sometimes you see things come back again. And, and that's how I view this center. Uh, when it was here earlier, and my brother used to go to the store for my mom and to walk the two blocks up here. And it, it was a source of pride, as the mayor said. And it was a source of everything starting to turn because I was here prior to uh, 1968. I, I knew what we had in this neighborhood. And Councilman Reed named some of the things that we had in the neighborhood, but we, were, we had everything we needed right along this block between 27th Street and 32nd Street. And after the riots of 68, things changed and a lot of things didn't come back. So this is a great symbol of revitalization in this community. This is gonna bring a lot of pride back to the residents in this community. And that's why I'm really happy to be here today because I've lived through the before and, and, and I've lived through the afterwards and now I'm living through the afterwards again. And it's really nice that uh, people be able to walk a, a half a block, one block, two blocks to the store and it also brings competition uh, to uh, the neighborhood, and that's always a good thing. And as, as Councilman Reed said, if he's got the first hundred, the mayor's got the second hundred, and he's got the third hundred. <laughs> so thank you again for inviting me here. Thank you, Councilman Reed. Uh, it's really uh, exciting to be a part of today. Thank you very much.
So with that, we'll have now our CEO, our city manager, who has uh, done a lot of hard work and a lot of um, unique things to make this happen. Let's give it up for our city manager, Troy Schultz. Well, we made it. Um, it was a long time coming. This has been a great project. I want to take an opportunity to uh, again echo Councilman Reed and, and the mayor's comments about the uh, importance of the city council, both the current city council and the former city council, who never said no to this project, never said this is not the right way to spend the city's money. And uh, when we are all said and done, this will be a $17 million investment of public funds into this project with tax increment financing helping to repay the bill. So this has been a tremendous project um, and it's been a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Uh, Don Maxwell, from the early beginnings, just sitting here, let's figure out a way to make this thing work. Yeah. I want to thank Rick Warner. He's, he's standing in the back. He brought, helped kind of bring the concept of, and a financing approach that worked. Rick, are you back there? I saw him wave his, have him wave his arm. He's, he was floating around there somewhere. Um, uh, the team at Post and Alley, who uh, did a lot of hours, uh, crunching the numbers, making the math work, uh, signing up the agreements. Uh, all, obviously, our grocer, uh, John Lapari has stepped forward and stuck with us, so thank you, John. Uh, we think this is going to be a great project. There's a number of people. Mario Vasquez is our city project manager. Uh, he's not here today uh, dealing with a family emergency, but he'll be on the site tomorrow probably making sure that everything moves forward. John Wood, Stuart Bullington from our neighborhoods department have spent countless hours putting this deal together, making sure all the T's got crossed, all the I's got dotted. Our TIF commission, who spent hours, uh, st uh, staff at the Economic Development Corporation. Uh, and I also want to give a special thanks to uh, Teola Powell, uh, who seven years ago, when I was newly in this position, said, you're going to spend some after you're going to spend a Friday afternoon going around looking at grocery stores on the east side. And Teola and I spent about three hours driving around looking at grocery stores and convinced me of the need that we needed to make an investment over here and so if she, I haven't seen her, but if she's out in the crowd, and I think she is, she has been a tremendous force at the key coalition for making the east side, especially this part of the east side, vibrant again. So all of the thanks in the world to her for all their work. So, this is the first step in the, as we deal with the food desert issue uh, and we reclaim the east side. Uh, this is the first step in a long journey, but there's a lot of development going on up and down this corridor. There's more opportunities to come as we move forward. So uh, on behalf of the city of Kansas City, thank you to all the partners uh, who are here today who have persevered. Uh, getting into the development business, uh, direct development business, is something the city is not used to doing. Uh, so we had to break uh, some rules, uh, make new rules as we move forward, and it took a lot of resilient, uh, patient partners as we figured out how to do this that make it work for everybody involved. So thank you very much. I look forward to some demolition occurring. And most importantly, I'm with Councilman Reed. The first $100 of groceries is on me when we open this thing. Uh, thank you very much. Keep up the great work. Woo, we, are, we, we up at 400 now. <laughs> Quit Lucas, you next. <laughs> Let's give it up for our third district at large city council member. Melba Curls passed the torch to him. Hope you got a hundred dollars. I guess. <laughs> I got a hundred dollars. I got a hundred dollars. Thank you all for being here. It is a uh, it's a beautiful day in Kansas City. I think it's lovely because we have this beautiful grocery store. Uh, I'll put my hundred dollars in, but I'll donate it to somebody else in the crowd to go shopping the first day. Uh, everybody said thank you. Yeah, I know, right? I see you. I see you're taking. I'm just going to be very quick on your thank yous because we are making such a big difference for the community. Yeah. You're saying today that this is worth investing in, that private investment is going to be something that's important here. We've played a big role, but I look forward to all of you on the private side who've given your time, given your dollars, given years and years of dedication to what's happening here, all of your energy. It means a lot to me, it means a lot to Councilman Reed, it means a lot to everybody who lives in this community. Because I know there's a lot of other stuff and a lot of other places y'all could have invested in. I know the late nights when you're at community meetings with us, which is something that we appreciate. You listen to everybody talk about what they wanted in the grocery store, you listen to people talk about the type of businesses they want back in the community. And so this is 
just another step. I look forward to seeing all the other stores that fill this center. I look forward to seeing development up and down Prospect. I look forward to seeing development and residents coming back to our community every step of the way and us taking sure and taking care of the people who have been here for years before. So thank you all for being here. I look forward to the next opening. I look forward to the next store. We look forward to more successes, more ribbon cuttings. I also want to make sure I'm sure people have done it. But I know Councilman Reed, Councilwoman Curls, Mayor James, and others have worked on this for years. But so have my colleagues, Scott Taylor, Lee Barnes, Catherine Shields. I see you all here today. So thank you as well. God bless you all. I look forward to shopping. I'll get my money in real soon. Thank you. <laughs> We have heard a lot about our neighborhoods, and so we want to now bring up one of our uh, neighborhood leaders. Uh, and she is part of the Key Coalition Neighborhood Association. And so at this time, I invite Ms. T. Lester, T. T. Lester Powell with the Key Coalition, who is celebrating their 40th year uh, this year of inception. So Ms. Powell. And by the way, this is Bernard Powell's wife. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I want to start off with a uh, um, uh, Swahili word, Harambe. 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 For those of you who do not know what Harambe means, it's a Swahili word that means pulling together. And today I see our community pulling together. Um, Bernard Powell had a legacy that will live forever. Yes. Long as I'm living, long as my children are living, my grandchildren and my new soon-to-be great-grandson. So, that being said, I want to talk about some of the dreams and visions that Bernard had while he was living in his little short life. Um, first thing that he was interested in was a strong community. Second thing, he and another SEC 20 member, Vernon Thompson, who used to be a state representative, saw the need to have a neighborhood association. So they organized and they incorporated Key Coalition Neighborhood. Bernard had a lot of dreams and a lot of visions, and we're standing on that vision today. He visioned an anchor grocery store with shops surrounding the grocery store. We had one, it closed. We're back again. So I'm really thankful for that. Ooh, the rain comes. In the early days, Bernard and SAC 20 were involved in a bookstore. Uh, they had sickle cell drives. They had a bakery. We will have a bakery in the new facility. Summer youth programs. I remember when the kids would be lying from 27th Street all the way up to 47th Street, cleaning prospect. We also had a standard oil service station at 47th and Paseo. These are just a few of the things that Bernard worked hard for. There was a Central Alumni Association. He was a graduate of Central High School. And let's not forget the SEC 20 balls, when Dick Gregory would come to town and speak to us about our livelihood, our health, what we put into our bodies, and how it affects us when we don't put the right things in our body. So that being said, I'm going to close. Um, I want to say that uh, on November the 17th of this year, Key Coalition will be celebrating their 40th anniversary. We are in the process of, thank you. For those of you who live in the Key Coalition neighborhood and are not active in that association, I welcome you. Please join us. We need you. 
And the last thing I want to say is, I think I got it here. Forever forward. Together stronger. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Powell. Now we've heard a lot about Don Maxwell, and it's my pleasure to be able to introduce uh, and bring him down to the podium, Don Maxwell. This has been a big day, something we as a community have been waiting on for a long time. Uh, we just had to Lester make comments, and she talked about her hard-headed husband. He was a very hard-headed, very stubborn person that I fought with on a regular basis. Since we were in the seventh grade, we wrestled and tussled about everything. He had a saying, get or go, man, the choice is yours. That's what this, that's what this project represents. It's a ghetto, we're getting ready to turn it into a gold mine. We're gonna polish it up, spit it out, and make everybody in this community welcome to return to Linwood and Prospect. There are a lot of people I wanna thank. And we had the older gentleman up here a while ago named Reverend Hartsfield. <laughs> and he's like a father to me. I've been stuck with him all my life. And he's been giving me orders. And I want to let you know that I didn't want to do this project. I didn't want to do this project. Reverend Hartsfield commanded that we do the project. Uh, 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 I went to a meeting. I went to a meeting with Reverend Hartsfield. He talked about the St. Joe Hospital and what it represented in our community, the worst blight we'd ever had in our community, and he said we got to remove it. And I was saying, yeah, hey man, we need to do that. <laughs> in some kind of way, I got chose. <laughs> but I'm very appreciative of that at this point because we've come a long way. He was able to organize some 31 churches that made an investment right. in the shopping center. We were able to get some 20 businessmen from our community to make an investment in the shopping center. And then we had the Community Development Corporation, which I served as president of, to make a huge investment in this corporation. The staff of that organization, I want to thank. I want to thank the contractors that are working on the project. I want to thank, I don't see Tom Eatman, but Tom Eatman designed this shopping center and he's redesigning the interior of the shopping center as we speak right now. I want to thank, I want to give the person very close to me that has really helped on this project and I want to pass the baton to him. He's going to get it. I want my son to stand up. He's, he's, my, he's my attorney and, and, and just like I had to fight with Bernard all the time, I had to fight with him. He's hard-headed. He's stubborn. And I, got to, I got to fight with him all the time. Daddy, that ain't the way we got to do this. I especially want to give a thanks to the mayor. The mayor championed this project. Right. Jermaine Reed has been a godsend for this project. Right. And we've had to work with Troy Schulting and Troy's staff. And they are, the, I'm gonna say that his staff is hard-headed and stubborn as well, because we have wrestled over this project backwards and forward. But we got it done. Yeah. It's, it's getting ready to happen at this point. So, thank you to the community, thank you to the neighborhood organizations, Santa Fe, Key Coalition, Oak Park, uh, uh, all been very instrumental in supporting and making this project work. I want to thank the tenants that are here, and I want to thank the new tenants that are coming. We have leased up all the space in the shopping center as of right now, except for one space. Got one space left over here. My, my, my co-developer, Matt Dennis in the back, he'll be coming up here. I appreciate working with he along on this project. We have really put in a lot of time to make this happen. When you uh, try to do something in this community, it's very difficult. Getting financial institutions to work with you, very difficult to do. But we're starting to get financial institutions to talk about coming back. We're even looking at building a new financial institution. With all that, I'll say uh, thank you to Everybody. And again, the, the way I started, I want to end. Get or go, man, the choice is yours. That's a decision that we have to make. So the next two gentlemen that are coming uh, up here will uh, be the 
Linwood Boulevard Development LLC manage, G, manager uh, R.H. Johnson, a real estate uh, developer, and also in partnership with LaPari Brothers, which we heard a lot about, our SunFresh grocery oper operator. And so they'll tell you a lot more about the development and what to expect before we break the ground here very shortly. So let's give it up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wow, what a celebration. Yeah. Oh, man, unbelievable. It's hard to think that after almost three years, manager, that we're standing here today, getting ready to lay probably one of the most important building blocks in economic revitalization and development that this community has seen in a long time. And on advice of council, I'm going to be loud, brief, and seated. So we'll turn this over quickly to uh, the most important people here that I've gotten to know extremely well over the last two or three years. John and Pam LaPerry. I can go back down through the list of thanks from the mayor to the manager to Mr. Maxwell and his son Donald who have just been fabulous to work with. Councilman Reed and Lucas, you guys have been great. But I want to take my hat off to one, two gentlemen particularly, and then I'm going to introduce my development team and I will be seated. Every time we hit a stumbling block, uh, whether it was through regulation or being told no, we couldn't make it happen that way, John Wood would step up and make sure that from the city's perspective, this project was going to happen and that we we're going to end up where we are today. Mario Vasquez, his name was mentioned earlier, has just been a gem to work with. And I have to tell you that we are blessed with city leaders from Mayor James to Councilman to Manager Schulte. And Mr. Wood, my hat's off to you. Thank you for all your hard work on this. We, uh, it's been three years. We have a fabulous operator, and they are perhaps the most important linchpin because as was mentioned by Manager Schulte, this is not just going to be a secondary grocery store. This is going to be a primary, full-service grocery store that this community will be proud of. These two folks that you're about ready to meet are going to immerse themselves. They have immersed themselves in this community. There will be outreach. There will be economic development. There will be jobs. And they look forward to working with this community and bringing this in about a year, hopefully sooner, uh, Mr. Huber. Uh, to its opening, and I will pledge on behalf of Huber Construction and Jaeger Architecture and the developer equally another $100 a piece to be donated <laughs> for the first day that the store opens to match Councilman Reeves and, and the manager. So we look forward to the opening, and uh, I appreciate everybody's time and what a turnout today. John, Pam. Uh, this is quite an exciting day. Uh, it's been three long years, and uh, you know we just can't believe now it's finally here. So, uh, hats off to everybody. There's been a lot of hard work. Uh, I mean, you don't even know these guys have worked their tails off for for a long time. Uh, they're talking about a full service store. What what that means is we are going to be there at every step. We, we're going to have people there by your side. All your needs, we're going to have a full uh, service meat case. We're going to have a hot and cold deli. Yes. We're going to have a bakery. Uh, the produce department uh, is going to be bar none. It's going to be, I want it to be the best in town. So that's going to be one of our specialties. Uh, that's, that's a big deal. But the biggest deal is service and everybody, I want everybody in the store that comes in to feel so welcome that they can't wait to come back. So that's our goal. Uh, I think uh, I like the idea of everybody buying all these $100 grocery things. <laughs> so so here's, here's the deal. Whoever brings $100 for groceries, I'll carry them out to your car personally. <laughs> uh, maybe I can get Jermaine to help too. Uh, so, I want to thank everybody. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. I can't wait to this get started and over with. Uh, one other thing too I want to say. Um, around September, October, we're going to have a little job fair. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get into the building. Uh, we're going we're gonna to let the news media around here uh, know about this so it will be posted around the, the community. Uh, but uh, that's going to be a big deal. Right now we're trying to put our key guys in place. 
once we get that done, then we'll then we'll uh, hire the rest of the employees. Um, so yeah, there's gonna we're gonna have about 80 to 100 employees. So we want to hire within this community, and it's gonna it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Well, I'll tell you what, this mic is sure hot for hundred dollars, isn't it? <laughs> Anybody touch it, you got a hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, so this project started out uh, with an up-and-coming African-American construction company, uh, 777. That's you, my man, Marcus. So of course, Marcus. Uh, everybody knows him already, but I'll give you a few, 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 few words about Marcus. He has a uh, roofing firm that has begun replacing and repairing the roofs uh, for the retail rings of this location here for the north and south, uh, for the grocery store facade. And so we appreciate the work that you're doing, and know that you're going to continue to do a lot of great work, uh, Marcus. In addition to that, I want to be sure to recognize Leonard Grimm. I believe I saw him over here somewhere uh, in his firm with Telefield and Brand. Uh, Telefield and Brown. Uh, he's the president and he certainly is a well respected uh, business uh, person in our community and will be working on this project as well. Uh, we have uh, had two successful update meetings for this uh, project. We want to encourage you that if you would like to know more information about the project as we go forward, uh, there will be a newsletter that will be uh, disseminated throughout the community and we want to be sure to invite you to future meetings. Uh, so there is a table back in the back here and we want to make sure that you sign in if you're a community member and you'd like more information about uh, the project and attend, of course, additional meetings. Another exciting uh, part about this, and I know that Councilwoman Shields was really responsible throughout the years for this, uh, for the 1% for art, and so there will be another addition for that for city funded uh, projects that this project will have as well. Finally, uh, I want to take a minute to thank the community for uh, your patience, your understanding, and for this process. I think that we should certainly give everyone in this room a rousing round of applause for your patience through this process. There were some donuts on the table. I'm not sure if Mary James has ate them all, but uh, uh, they come from Johnny's. That's what you do. <laughs> You know what? We, we are up at about 800, so if we get it to about 1,000, and, and let, okay, yeah, you did, you did, we got, okay, we got 1,000, but let me say something about it because we'll, we'll certainly be collecting the checks. I, I know everyone will, uh, I'm going to collect the check. That's, that's, that's. What we'll do is that when we have the grand opening in 12 months from now, we'll make sure that that process will be some type of raffle or drawing. So of course, we won't buy anyone's groceries today, but when we're back here uh, for the actual opening, we will make sure that that information is out and that we do it in an organized fashion. And Lee Barnes, uh, we hope that you can help us get to that. <laughs> Finally, uh, here it says that, uh, okay, I said that. Pastor Bell, unfortunately, is not able to be with us, but let's take a moment to, uh, Pastor Hartsfield, if you could come up and uh, lead us in a benediction. And then when he's done, we're going to come over here uh, where the hard hats are and we will uh, do the uh, count off for the, the construction piece. And then they will do the facade uh, work as well. And let's thank God for the rain, which has stopped uh, as well. Moses said to his brother Aaron, tell the priest, and have the priests say to the people, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord smile upon you and the Lord be gracious unto you and the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Now unto him who's able to keep you from stumbling, slipping, or falling, who's able to present you graciously before his throne 
with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority, even now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Beginning of a new day. One, two, three.